How's it going guys? Welcome to another video. Bit of a different video today, but I think it will be an interesting one for you. I'm basically gonna talk you through the home gym, the gym I train from, I train my clients from, and how I've kind of put it all together, the costs associated, the things I'd do differently if I was to do it again. And basically, if you're in the position that you th you're thinking about maybe setting up a home gym, whether it's a bigger space like this, whether it's a garage space, Hopefully this will be a good insight for you and give you a few ideas and a few things to think about. So let's have a look at the kit. Okay, so I'm stood bang in the middle of the gym. I'm going to give you a full 360 of everything in here without going into too much detail. And uh, yeah, then we'll talk more about it afterwards. But just loosely going through things, we've got the Assault Bike from Assault Fitness. We've got some Slam Balls, big chunky 50 kilo dumbbells, Life Fitness adjustable bench the one to 10 kilo hex dumbbells, a life fitness 45 degree back extension, and then that's the main doorway in there. If we loop round, you can see there we've got the sofa, which is the only thing that got, I got for free in here, but it's one of the most valuable things in here for the sake of good comfy rest periods in between sets. And then if we come across to the centerpiece of the gym, we've got the dumbbell rack, which goes from 10s to 45s. We've obviously got the extra 50s as well that I just showed you. TV and sandbar, great investment. Everyone wants to buy gym kit for their home gym, but you've got to have a good sound system and perhaps a TV as well. And that's made a huge, huge difference for the sake of some, some sessions I'll come in and I'll do, I'll put some YouTube on, or sometimes it'll just purely be connect my Spotify up to the sandbar, but nice to have the option. We've got a life fitness leg extension up next from the Pro Series range. Fantastic bit of leg kit and was in great condition when I got it, still in great condition now. We've got a set of Strength Shop bumper plates from 5s up to 25s. My little cleaning box if you're going to have a home gym, keep it tidy. As we come down into the kind of the bottom area of the gym, you can see we've got a Concept 2 ski erg with a foot plate. Fantastic for conditioning without any kind of concussion on your joints. We've got, again, Life Fitness Pro Series. We've got a lion hamstring curl. And then down at the bottom there, you can see I've got a seated uh, hamstring curl from Life Fitness. Got a heavy bag, Hoover, because again, clean gym, happy gym. Now this platform we built into the floor out of oak, originally because I had the squat rack right here. But the thing is, when you've got a home gym, you end up moving shit around and you have different ideas. So now I've just got kind of a nice clear area to use the platform, trap bar, Swiss ball there as well. And yeah, the mirror was obviously set up where I used to have the squat rack. But it's nice now to just kind of have this open space if I want to do any deadlift work, then I've obviously got a rock solid surface in that oak platform to get the best from those lifts. Now if I come back up, and work my way around. You can see here I've got another Life Fitness Pro piece of kit, seated row. Really like this piece. It's probably the newest piece I've got in here for purchases recently. Those movable arms really do let you get kind of the best from the movement without being too fixed in. Need to get the upholstery changed though because my OCD is not enjoying that burgundy upholstery. Selection of bars, all from, I think all from Strength Shop. We've got the football bar in the middle. We've got little EZ bar, a short four foot straight bar, and then a couple of different Olympic bars with different grips. And then that brings us round to the squat rack. It's, it's a little half rack, which actually, I originally had a hammer strength rack, which anyone who knows anything about gym equipment will know hammer strength is kind of like the Rolls Royce of gym equipment. And I actually got rid of it in favor of getting this in instead. And it's a, it's a York rack. Now everyone thinks of York and thinks, yeah, it's kind of crap Argos catalog kit, but their commercial stuff is actually very, very good in my experience, and especially these racks. This rack, the reason I got it was because this little bar here, where you can see those two little holes, links up to this bench, which is an adjustable bench like the Life Fitness one, but I don't know if you can quite see underneath here. Can't quite see it, but anyway, there's two prongs there that allow you to kind of lift in through, from these handles and pop into those holes. So you can then set up to have a flat bench press, an incline bench press, but know that you're smack in the middle every single time. 
And uh, yeah, I really like that feature. I don't know if Hammer Strength have, have come up with something like that, but if they have, it's definitely gonna be a lot more expensive than this setup was anyway. Um, and then the other thing that goes with that, that, that rack is the dip horns. So they just slot onto the frame and then you've got a setup for your dips as well. If I keep coming round, you can see we've got a little bathroom, which is ideal, again, for the sake of training clients, comes in very, very handy. But uh, yeah, had the chance to put a bathroom on as well, so why not? Um, and then if I come back out of there without falling over anything, another big centerpiece we've got in here is this Life Fitness Synergy Dual Stack. I've actually taken the, the safety guards off so I can kind of see the plates more. I think it's a little bit more aesthetic. I prefer it that way and it's definitely easier to clean. We've got all the attachments in the middle, pull up bar, all the different attachments that will go on the cables. We've got TRX, we've got battle ropes. We've actually got a never ending rope up there as well, like a grappler rope. So yeah, it's a hell of a piece of kit. And uh, yeah, it's not gonna be going anywhere anytime soon that for the amount of faff it is putting it all together and moving it. Wall space used well there with a couple of bars, EZ bar, straight bars, Bulgarian split squat stand from Strength Shop, a few little bits on the shelf there. We've got parallel bars, we've got uh, the gymnastic rings, bands and straps. Again, wall space utilized well here by just putting a couple of hooks on the wall and then you can hang all your bands and I've got the dip belt up there, elbow sling, skipping ropes. Plyo Brock box from Jordan, soft box, so you're not gonna skin your shins on it. Another big couple of big pieces from Life Fitness. We've got the Life Fitness lap pull down. Very kind of a rock solid piece of kit. Just look, well, you can kind of tell I like this, this kit because much of it matches, much of it is the Life Fitness Pro Series range. Again, same piece of kit or same range, different piece of kit. Chest press, that's probably one of the pieces of kit that needs a little bit of TLC still. You can just see, looking at the stack there, a little bit of rust, but nothing that repowder coating can't sort out. Little toy box behind there, with again, more attachments, belts, cones, little massage implements, all kinds of bits and pieces. And then the last big piece of kit we've got is the decline 45 degree leg press from Power Zone, which yeah, I've used a lot of leg presses over the years. This one, very good for a combination of kind of getting the best from a floor footprint, as in doesn't take up acres and acres of space like you would have with say a hammer strength one or pre-core, um, but actually feels great as well, rock solid. So I think that is just about it on the actual equipment itself. So yeah, I'll talk you through a few more finer points on these things now. Okay, so you've seen the gym space, now I just wanna talk through a few things that if I was to do this again, or advise anyone who is about to do it, these are things that I think would be really, really important to think about. So, number one, the actual floor space itself. You need to obviously know the space you're working with to plan what's gonna fit where, and that's both floor space itself, as in what's under your feet, but ceiling space too. If you've got things like power racks, cables, tall pieces of kit like a lap pull down maybe. You need to know obviously what height you're working with before going and buying kit. The more space the better, within reason. Um, so if you've got the opportunity to build a little bit higher if you're doing a kind of home build, great, go for it, opens up more options. Um, but if you can't, then obviously you're gonna have to use kit that accommodates for the height that you do have access to. Point number two, lighting. Lighting is massive. Anyone that goes to the gym regularly knows that, and it's worth investing in getting the lighting right. So in here I've got a combination of spotlights, um, but they can be quite harsh by themselves, which is why I've got some like almost like strobe lights that go above the mirrors that you can see as well. And the combination of the two works really nicely. I haven't got that much daylight, but I have got a couple of windows in here too. And the combination of all three of those works really well. If you've just got a garage space and you don't necessarily have uh, any daylight coming in without the garage door being open, you might wanna just spend a bit more time getting that lighting right and really kind of, you don't want it to be too clinical, but equally you don't want it dingy either. Third thing, similar to lighting, because it's something that people don't think about, they're thinking more about equipment, but 
you've got to get your sound system right. Now, headphones are great, you're going to train wearing them a lot, but there's plenty of times where I'll just put the TV on, the sound bar, link my Spotify up to that, and yeah, I'll, I'll run my music or I might be watching videos from, from other things on the TV, um, through the TV and the sound bar, but it's, it's nice to have the option and I think it's worth it because you don't want to be bursting in your eardrums wearing headphones every session, but for the extra few hundred quid, definitely advise invest in a TV, invest in a sound bar. Next point, similar to the previous two to be fair, invest in the whole thing, but setting up a home gym is not cheap. Not if you're gonna get good kit in and really make it both, well, safe, effective, enjoyable. Like you're not looking to go and just get a few bits from Argos, bang it all together and expect them to have fulfilling, productive workouts for the next 10 years. But you can have that if you get this right from the start. So you're not gonna do it for hundreds of pounds, it's gonna be thousands, even if you're looking at a single garage space by the time you've put good flooring down, you've put a decent rack in there, invested in some good dumbbells, you're gonna be into the thousands of pounds. But be okay with that on the basis that you are investing in, in yourself and your health, you are gonna be saving a ton of time because all of a sudden you're, you're not gonna to have to deal with that whole kind of commute and journey to the gym. Um, and yeah, if you're looking at doing your whole health and fitness thing as something that's gonna be kind of for the foreseeable, then you will absolutely get your value back on the money that you invest in doing this. Next point is heating. Now, I know a lot of guys that have got garage gyms and this is kind of an afterthought and they only think about it when they get seriously cold in the winter. But you do need to think about this, whether it's insulating the, the space you've got um, or whether it's having a heating system. Ideally, you wanna do both because there's no point heating a, a badly insulated garage. But there is nothing worse than getting up to go train early in the morning in your garage gym. Bars are freezing cold, you're having to train in gloves, it takes forever to get warm. Um, so yeah, think about the, the insulation issue and the heating issue because again, yes, it's extra money and it's not directly on the, the gym kit itself, but it's very important, trust me. Next point is utilizing wall space. So you probably noticed when I was just showing you around, there ain't much free wall space in here because I've either got things hung on the wall like the bands on hooks, I've got bars stored on the wall on, on slightly bigger, more reinforced hooks. I've got mirrors that span all the way around, which great for the sake of obviously seeing yourself. That's the obvious one. But the other part of it is it gives you the feeling of, of space and airiness as well. Um, and for, again, a few extra hundred quid, which for, for as big of a difference as it makes in a home gym, I think it's money well spent, to be honest. Uh, so yeah, think about what you're going to do with that wall space and how you're going to maximise it to again give you more to the gym as an overall. There's only so much you can fit on the floor, so you got to look at the walls as well. So the last thing I know people are going to want to know about that I mentioned at the start is the actual cost and what it's cost me to do this. So rather than go through, itemise everything and talk you through it, I'll run a nice list down this side of the screen that will just show you how each bit kind of breaks down. I've kept it in a spreadsheet all the way through the process of, of creating this. It started off very differently and there's bits of kit I've kind of wheeled and dealed, got rid of something, brought something else in. Um, like I said earlier, changed the floor plan around. So there's actually bits of kit I've managed to buy and actually sell on a, a profit. There's other little hacks, like even the, the hex dumbbells, the one to tens, I bought about 10, 12 sets of those and shipped them in and sold out kind of the, sold out the, all the rest that I didn't want to keep my set and actually made a profit then on buying them in for going through the faff of getting them shipped in from the other side of the world. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping that list is just about finished now. As you can see, like I said, it ain't cheap. It's an investment, but it's a big investment in yourself, and if you do it right, then this kit's not really gonna lose all that much in, in value, especially if you manage to equip your gym with refurbished or second-hand kit that's been well looked after. I think there's only 
new kit wise in this gym, the only new kit was the dumbbells and I think the bars as well. Everything else I managed to get second hand or refurbished and I've saved thousands and thousands for doing that. It's a bit of faff going in, here, there and everywhere around the country and back and forth with offers through Facebook, eBay and whatnot. But if you want to save the money, it, it definitely is worth the effort. Um, like I say, on one hand, invest in it, be okay with spending plenty of money. But on the other hand, there is ways you can kind of curb it a little bit, but not for the sake of losing quality of kit that you're getting. So I hope that all makes sense anyway. I think that's just about it. If you've got any questions about my setup, any anything you want to ask me directly about something related to your situation, I'll be interested to hear it in the comments. And yeah, I hope there was something useful in there for you. Appreciate any subscribes, likes, all of that. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.